Hey, welcome to the Riggin' Farm YouTube channel. I'm not sure how the audio sounds right now. I was using a microphone and it worked just fine and then it broke and I replaced it with a new one and that one has had really awful interference and has a really horrible buzzing sound. I apologize for that disturbance in previous videos where you had to listen to that. I'm using just the in-camera microphone right now. I'll do some more research and maybe get one that's not a piece of junk without spending $100 or so on just a little microphone. As you can see, I'm at the farm right now. On my way up here, I bought a brand new diesel can and filled it up. The previous one I had exploded and got diesel everywhere, as you may have seen in a previous video. I also picked up a couple gallons of gear oil for our rear PTO implements, like the tiller and the rotary cutter. We'll probably get more implements in the future that also require that oil, so I felt like it was a pretty good investment. I was able to get two gallons of tractor supply for the same price as 64 ounces at the local auto parts store. Auto parts stores, stop ripping people off. It's ridiculous. Tractor Supply, thanks for having affordable prices. I apologize for not lifting it up more, but this thing is kind of heavy when it's got five gallons of diesel in it. I'm gonna lower it so I can actually walk over there without hurting myself. Hopefully this design works out a lot better for my needs because the other one you had to rest on the fuel tank in order for it to dispense and that's what caused it to crack. This one you can just set it right over there and let it flow in and hopefully it's not gonna cause any problems. Now that the tank is almost empty, I can hopefully fish out those pieces of plastic that I dropped in there when the can exploded. I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down while I give that a shot. I wasn't able to get the nozzle, but I did get the O-ring out, which is kind of surprising that I was able to get this little piece out, but the giant piece I couldn't find. I know that that giant nozzle is not gonna get stuck in the fuel line, so I guess it's safe to be in there for a while. If I ever take the tractor in for service, I'll see if they can take it out for me, but I'm not gonna worry about it otherwise. I'm not gonna be able to do this while holding the camera, but as you can see, I have the can resting right there, and all I need to do is push that little green button and it dispenses the diesel right into the fuel tank, hopefully without getting any plastic in there. I got it fueled up pretty much all the way to the top. Yesterday when I was out here doing some work on the tractor, I drove over some debris and it yanked the electrical wiring from the third function valve. That makes it to where the grapple doesn't work. Armed with only a pair of pliers, I was able to get it working again. But unfortunately, when I lowered the hood, it pulled the wire loose because I didn't have a position very well, and I decided that I'm just gonna let it go for now. I didn't bring the proper tools with me today to fix it, but that's okay because I'm actually gonna take the grapple off anyway and put the bucket on. I won't be using that third function, which is what makes the grapple open and close. So I'll probably come up next week and fix it. All right, it's time to take off the grapple and put the bucket on. Brought my water today so I can stay hydrated. Buckle up so if I tip, I don't die. Park and brake off. High throttle. Let's get some work done. I'm up in the garden area right now. My goal is to fill in that giant hole from that giant tree stump and then try to smooth out the entire area so it's ready to go for the garden. This is day two of using the box blade in the garden area. Yesterday I had the scarab buyers on the second lowest setting and today I dropped them all the way. And I'm digging down really deep. I'm getting a lot more roots and debris that was underneath the ground. That's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is I'm getting it all up. The bad thing is it's there to begin with. And also it's causing a little more stress on the tractor. It's not that it's bad for the tractor. I would just benefit from more horsepower. I'm also getting a bunch of stuff stuck in there, so I'm having to take breaks. 
and get it free. It's okay other than the fact that I forgot to bring my gloves again. Alrighty, time to get back on the tractor. So this happened again, I'm probably gonna have to get another wire harness for the third function valve. I'm not sure how I'll be able to repair this piece right here without us buying a new one. Also, more stuff getting stuck in here. Cool. So there are five of these, but one of them fell off. See how this one's flat and this one's missing it. That got lost somewhere. At least I don't have a whole lot of ground to cover, but it might be buried underground. So I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Hopefully this thing has some kind of guarantee on it where they'll replace it for me. I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna be honest, I'm getting a little frustrated with the box blade right now. I put it in the lowest position so I could get as deep as possible and pull up all of the roots and other debris that are underneath the topsoil. The problem is it keeps getting stuff stuck in it and I wasn't having that same problem yesterday when it was in the second to lowest position. And I keep getting all these roots. Look at all this stuff that keeps getting stuck in there. I'm going to reposition the scarifiers to the position they were in yesterday. Hopefully I'll have more success and I won't have to keep getting off the tractor to get it unstuck. To make the adjustments, you use pliers to pull these clips out. You reposition the scarifier and you put the clip back in. Apparently the upgraded version of this has pins and it's a lot easier to make those adjustments. I wish we would have known about that before purchasing this one and spent the extra money. I think it would have been well worth it. Lesson learned. If you're in the market for a box blade, don't get this one, get the upgraded version. It'll be worth the money. If you want to increase your hand strength, I recommend buying this box blade because using the pliers to squeeze those clips to where you can pull them out is quite the workout. That first pass with the adjustment on the box blade was already a huge difference. I was able to actually pick up most of the debris and kept it in the box and did a great job. I just don't think that bottom position is as good as it should be. The box itself should stay relatively level with the ground and the scarifiers are underground pulling stuff up but they weren't actually staying underground. They were pulling stuff up and preventing the box blade from going back down to ground level. So all the stuff was just trailing behind. This position right here, I think is that sweet spot where it digs pretty deep, but it also captures everything in the box the way it's supposed to. I'm gonna make several more passes and try to get this area cleaned up and looking beautiful and ready for the guard. That scarifier speared a log. That was pretty cool. I used the box blade to pull out that little tree stump. I really didn't think about how powerful the box blade could be pulling up these smaller tree stumps. There's no way I could have done the larger tree stumps with the box blade. So the stump bucket was still 100% necessary to get tree stumps out using this tractor. Still pretty cool that I got the smaller one out. It took some work, but I got it. As you can see, I'm not at the farm anymore. I was about to wrap up this vlog as the construction guy showed up with his tractor. He came out with his box blade so that he could fix our driveway since it was kind of destroyed. It was time for me to go after talking to him for a couple minutes because I had to pick kids up from school. The kids are home from school and it's time for me to collect some eggs. Figured I'd bring the camera out with me and finish up this vlog now. We have seven eggs over here and we have nine eggs over here. I was able to use a combination of both the bucket and the box blade to fill in the hole and smooth out the area where that tree stump was. I think I have the garden area about as graded as I'm going to get it before we get some compost and get that tilled into the garden. While I had the box blade on, I figured I might as well make a little pathway from the driveway up to the garden. When we get our compost delivered, we'll need to use the bucket to get it up to the garden area. I want a nice smooth path for when my bucket's full of stuff because I don't want to bump over a log or something and end up tipping the tractor because that'd be pretty sad. I was able to get some drone footage of that, so here, take a look. Overall, I'd say it was a productive day at the farm. I was able to stop and get a new diesel can and fill it up on my way. I got the gasket out of the fuel tank, but not the nozzle. The fuel tank was topped off, and after being on the tractor for about three hours, I still have about three quarters, so that's pretty good. I was able to fill in that last stump hole and get things pretty smoothed out, made a road. I'm pretty happy with how the day went. I can't wait till we're actually living up there because this two and a half hour round trip commute is not fun. I will literally get hours of extra work done when I'm able to walk out the front door and hop on the tractor and do what I need to do. 
Having to wait this long has been very frustrating. On the bright side, it does give us a little extra time to be prepared before we live up there. We haven't even started on our chicken coop or fence, so if we were living up there, our chickens would be homeless. In addition to all the other frustrating things that have happened lately, we ordered a canopy for our tractor. It was supposed to be delivered last week. When I looked at the tracking information, it said delivery attempt failed. The next day, delivery attempt failed. So I gave them a call to find out what was going on. Nobody had any answers. The third day, delivery attempt failed. The next day I called. I asked them to leave a note for the driver with very specific directions and let them know that they can just drop it off at the front gate if no one's there. No big deal. Guess what? Delivery attempt failed. When I looked at the tracking information, after the delivery attempt, it said it went back to the facility. I know exactly where the facility is, and it's about an hour away from our property. It said it returned to the facility about 20 minutes after the delivery attempt. So I don't even know if they even tried. Super frustrating. As of a few days ago, the tracking information said that it would be delivered today. On my way up to the property, I checked the tracking again, and it said it's being delivered, but it's being shipped back to the sender. I called them to find out what was going on and why it was shipped to the sender, and they said, well, after four delivery attempts, we sent it back, and in the process, they damaged the package. I told them, well, I need my product, what's going on? And they said, well, the shipper is going to have to file a claim. I called the company and told them what was going on. They told me that it's very doubtful that it was actually damaged, and it's probably just the packaging itself. So once it's received, he'll take a look at it, and he's just going to have it delivered straight to our home, and I can put it in the back of my SUV or the trailer if I need to, and at least we'll have it. <sighs> it's always something else I tell you. As always, we really appreciate you watching these videos until the end. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to comment below with any feedback or share your horrible FedEx stories. I've got tons of them. Down the road when we're shipping products to our customers, we will never use FedEx. They are absolutely awful. No exaggeration, a quarter of the time I've had FedEx deliveries, there's been a horrible issue. They've delivered to the wrong house. They've delivered miles down the street. They've said they've delivered and not actually delivered. Absolutely awful. I would absolutely love at least one day with nothing but great news. Maybe that day is tomorrow. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when we post our next video and hopefully that great news will be in there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.